our church is made up of people, uh, all walks of life from all kinds of different backgrounds, and every single one of them has a heart that's beating inside their chest, and every single one of them contributes as part uh, to what is the body of Christ. That's what the church is. We don't have a building in New York City, so our church isn't a building, it's not a location, it's none of these things. It's a, it's a living organism. It's made up of all these moving parts, and uh, each and every single one of them add equal value to the whole, and uh, the sum of it is greater than any one of us in and of ourselves. That goes for people at leadership all the way down to uh, the person who walks in for the first time or stumbles in accidentally, and uh, they're welcome to be a part of this same body. For us, Heart for the House is a chance to tell people what really matters. I heard a quote that changed the way I give. Um, somebody said, your level of love will always be revealed in your level of investment. We get a chance to reflect how we feel about what we love. To me, I can't, I can't honestly say I love this church and I love the city of New York and I love what God's doing and not give to it. Heart for the House means this church is yours. This is for everybody from our, our young people to people who have called us home for years to say, this is, this is me, this is my house. I love it and I'm gonna give. And that's why it's, it's not a force, it's a we get to. So me and Laura aren't like, oh, we feel pressure because our, our church wants us to give. Um, for us, it's like, man, we get once a year, um, we get to collectively pull all we have and say, this is, this is where our heart is. I always love that image, you know, like a potluck. That's what Sunday should be. You know, we just bring what we have and we put a meal on for people. And there's a, there's, we make sure that there's always a place for someone to be sitting at that table. That's why we always want to keep making room for people. Because you want to make sure that you can have more guests at the table. You know, I can look back historically at Heart for the House, which obviously started in Sydney. And what it's made possible for us as a church and then what it's done in the lives of people, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't endorse more how wonderful Heart the House is and what a powerful impact it can make in New York. It's growing, a tremendous amount of people are coming to Christ. It's got so much vision, and so often vision is restricted by lack of resource. And we give our tithe and offering, which helps us with the daily running of the church, pays for the lights and for the theater and for all of the things that we do. When you give for Heart for the House, it means that we can look more toward vision, uh, towards the things that are not yet seen, the things that are not yet done. You're part of something significant. You're part of something eternal. It's a powerful thing. I remember the first time Pastor Brian um, talking about Heart for the House and giving us that opportunity to do that. And I was only a teenager at the time and it wasn't a lot that I could give, but I have a part to play. Even, even if it was $50, it was sacrificial for me at the time. You know, God sees it and He blesses that when we do that. It's never been equal giving. In other words, not everyone can give the same amount, but it's been built around the idea of equal sacrifice. It's built around a whole body of people who all do what they can sacrificially, and we bring it together because collectively we can do so much more than what we can do alone. We try to overcomplicate what God wants from us. We try to put a dollar amount. We try to put something, is this worth it? Does this make sense? Is this something that will pay off? But God asks us for our hearts, and He asks us for what we have, and it's our lives. That's all that we need to give Him. Well, you know what it was? It's uh, last week of COVID. The first time I stepped into church, I will say that from that day forward, I felt like I had a home and I felt like I had a family. It all happened kind of fast. Sometimes you don't realize how fast God will do things. It's been, it's been a year. We've been here. We love it. We love giving, love serving. Ready to worship? Yeah. What are we going to do right now? Some Sundays I'm rostered to sing and lead worship. I think I've been doing it for about four years. 
if it's a Sunday where I'm leading, working through the set list and making sure it all runs smoothly. And with that rehearsal too, when I'm not on, it's just kind of being around the team and making sure everyone's good. That's my favorite part. It's the in-between moments. I figure there's a, always a good laugh, a good joke, or like something fun. I think that's the best part. Well, I'm with the info bar. He started to serve for the host. He loved, you know, welcoming people. You mentioned that? Amen. Amen. Okay. We serve for the 5 and the 7 p.m. choir. So it's a full day for us. It's amazing. It might seem small, like, you know, just putting the, the prayer cards or information about our church and stuff or showing them to receipts. seats. For me, it's, it's big. Okay, go to the left, I mean. Yeah, it's time. Oi, pai! I was born in Brazil. I grew up in a very small town in the middle of nowhere, basically. Around that time when I turned 11, my dad would travel a bit here and there. When he came home, um, he spoke to my mom and he, was, he said, I feel like God's really going to take us overseas. So our visa was for only three years. And when that time period was coming to an end, my parents tried to apply for a permanent residency, but they got denied. They were trying to decide whether to stay or whether to go back to Brazil. It was hard. They were, we really had nothing to go back to. So they decided to stay. And I know that they decided to stay because of us. I get into my sophomore year in high school and I apply for the driver's ed course and I get my form and I bring it to my dad. He goes, I'm so sorry, but you can't. You won't be able to get a driver's license. I can teach you how to drive, but you can't get a driver's license. Then he explained to me that we have overstayed our visa and that we were now illegally in the country. It's terrifying. So he calls me Filia daughter in Portuguese and he'll go, I'm so sorry, Filia. I'm really sorry. And that's all he can say. That's all, yeah. I'm sorry, Filia. I'm so sorry. I just want, I get it, I get it why they did it. I'm not, I will never throw it, I will, even if I did in my angry teenage years, I will never hold it against them. That was my life now. I'm illegal in the country and there's nothing that I could do about it. I realized I can't really go to college. I can't actually work. I don't even have the proper documents to say that I'm a person in this country. This is where it all started on uh, September 9th, 2016. Came down here and uh, did my usual, doing laundry. I remember being right over here and I was getting ready to like put some clothes in the dryer and like the intense pain in my hip. It was so excruciating, I couldn't even get up. I went to the hospital and and I was told that the cancer is now spread outside the breast and it's in your bones. It's in your spine and your pelvis and your shoulders and your hips. I've heard the words, you have cancer before. Um, the first time I was devastated. I was um, so hurt and so angry. I was mad at God. Hearing that the cancer is now in your bones, I felt like I've passed a test the first time. I was very, very sad. Most times I, I thank him because I know that I'm already healed. I believe that I'm being used um, for his glory. It's tough. I just want it to be over. I know that we all have to go at some point. I'm just not ready. I just need more time. I just need more time. <laughs> the 
that the true story of our church is the everyday ordinary people living, breathing, working every day who uh, lay down their lives before God as an offering and understand they're a part of um, something bigger than themselves and together we walk that thing out. So often, I mean, the number of times I got mad at God, the number of times I questioned my faith, I questioned God, I questioned everything, questioned everyone, I questioned myself because I felt like God was a million miles away from what I needed. And just like God's taking care of us ahead of time and He's taking care of us for every prayer that we've prayed and every season we've been through and every moment where it felt like God didn't answer our prayer. It was my 20th birthday. Uh, my best friend and I decided that we wanted to take a trip to New York City. So I knew about our church, but I had never been to a church service. I told my friend, I was like, let's go. I want to check it out. I want to see what it's like. I can tell you that within the 10 minutes, it was just worship. I already felt at home. I felt it in my heart. This is going to be your family. And I was like, oh, I guess, I guess I'll, be, like, I'll belong. It was actually going to be easier for me here. I didn't need a car. I could just ride the subway. It's like I started from scratch and I knew it in my heart that I was going to be okay. And I felt like they loved me and they were looking at me instead of the papers that I didn't have. A few years ago, it was brought to government's attention that there are actually thousands and thousands of kids in my situation. So they came up with something called DACA and it stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. That meant we got a social security, we got employment authorization, and we were okay being in the country. The day after they announced that that was it for DACA, I had people texting me nonstop, screenshots of, their con of what they've sent to their senators. I've had people on our team come up to me and say, over our dead bodies. I learned that I'm loved and people believe in me and this is my home and this is my family, but I will ultimately hear and trust God. And he has the most beautiful plan, not only for me, but for my entire family. So what he says goes. And this home taught me that. So, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I think our church, you know, does a great job at just embodying that personality of come as you are and it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter, you know, what you've done, like you are loved and you are accepted and you are wanted here and this is your family no matter what. There's nothing that qualifies you and there's nothing that disqualifies you and you just come and we're in this together. always tell myself, how would you live had you not been told you had cancer? You would live like a healthy person. It's just a momentary thing. So why would I live differently because I was told that I have cancer? I know that spiritually I'm healed. He paid for my healing. So I lived as a healed person. Most importantly, I want to help people because I can, because I get to, and while I can, I still can function. Yeah, I function um, in pain, but I can walk, I'm breathing, I have beautiful eyes. I truly have no excuse um, not to be grateful. I have no place to feel that way. He has brought me a mighty long way. He's done enough. I serve because not that not only that God deserves my all, I serve because I can, I get to. I'm alive, that's why I serve. Every day that I'm alive, um, I serve, yeah. And that's why I do it. I love that thought that I heard someone once say, I have a heart for this house because this house first had a heart for me. And I just really pray that that's true, that the church has a heart for you personally, for you, your family, your future. And the Bible says those who are planted in the house 
will flourish and they will bear fruit. Find your spot, find your house, and if it's Hillsong Church, then be planted and give everything to it and watch your life explode with good fruit. Ultimately, what I believe Heart for the House is about every moment of the year, not just on one Sunday, but on one Sunday, we have a chance to celebrate that, to focus on it, and then on addition, to additionally bring the best and the most that we can bring out of what we have, not what we don't, um, and to do that financially. And uh, it's, there's just a power to it, the solidarity, the unity, um, and what happens when we bring our little bits together this year we're, we're renting our church office facility, but we have invested already a million dollars into Lafayette Street. A huge part of this offering is gonna to go to building out these offices. And in these offices, we'll have room to train our volunteers, to have evening college, to have exchange, to have meetings we just can't have right now because we have no venue. I'm believing that God's gonna really use um, the generosity of people to help us continually fortify you know, our hold in the city, and I can't wait. We need it, we're excited about what God's gonna do in it, and between our world, which is helping people we may never see, and our city, which is helping people we see every day, I know uh, when I put my head down after Heart for the House Sunday, there's a really cool feeling that, you know what, we can't do everything, but we did something. For some people in our church, this will be their first time ever where they can go, wow, this is my church. Not the church I go to, this is the church I build. It's my church, it's my seat, it's my life. This is, this is, this is you know, my worship service, welcome to it. It's such a different thing and that all comes through investment. It's never about the amount, it's always about the heart. This happens in church all the time where people go, I love church, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get around and giving to it for us. We're like, no, this is, this is everything right now. We're not just giving for today. We want our girls to grow up in a different New York City. I want my son to look around someday and not see all white faces in his, on his bus, in his college. I want him to see a diverse mix of people that represents um, what our city is really about. I want my daughter Ava to get paid as much as a boy her age. I want, she, I want to see stuff that people have given up on. The local church is the hope of the world. And that's why we give today. So if you want to make a difference, look no further. This is what we live for. And I think that's, that's the heartbeat of our church. When everything else falls apart, this is the only thing left, left standing. And it's his church. And so who wouldn't want to get in on that investment? Don't ever let this be a church you go to. Let this be a church you own and that you build. And that's what Heart for the House does. It evens the playing field. There's no gift that's better or worse. It's the heart of the person that matters. And that's why our church is what it is.